This video is part one of an Audio Basics series. Whether you're completely new to sound or you just need a refresher, in this video you'll learn the basics of what sound is and how it works. But if you're new here, welcome. My name is Kyle. If you want to learn more about audio production, subscribe to Audio University. Sound is vibration through a medium or a material. It can be any material. Wood, metal, water, air. Generally speaking, when we talk about sound, we're talking about fluctuating waves of high and low air pressure, called acoustical energy. Throughout this video, I'm going to use animations created by Dr. Daniel Russell. These are the best tools by far that I've found to intuitively understand how sound works. I recommend you check them out using the link I've provided in the description of this video. Imagine a pebble dropped into a pond. The pebble hits the surface of the water and forces it downward. The water then rebounds upward. This creates ripples of concentric circles that radiate outward. You can visualize it using this animation, which shows the same ripples across the surface of the water from a side view. Each downward movement is followed by an upward movement. Although this example pertains to waves rippling across the surface of water, a very similar thing happens as sound travels through air. To visualize the propagation of sound waves through air particles, let's imagine a snare drum. Sound has two basic phases, compression and rarefaction. When the drummer strikes the drum from above, the drumstick forces the membrane of the drum downward, as seen in figure one. The air that surrounds the membrane rushes to fill the new space, creating an area of low pressure as the particles spread out. This is illustrated in figure two. This is called a rarefaction, as the particles are being rarefied or made rare. Rarefaction occurs when the relative air pressure is decreased. Just as in the pond example, the drum membrane's downward movement is followed by an upward recoiling movement, shown in figure three. As the membrane moves upward, it forces air molecules around it to bunch together or compress. Figure four shows this compression. Compression occurs when the relative pressure is increased. This cycle occurs again and again. Rarefaction, compression. Rarefaction, compression. Low pressure, high pressure. Low pressure, high pressure. The snare drum's movement not only affects air particles directly surrounding it, but it causes a chain reaction. Just like the example of the pebble in the pond, sound waves ripple outward. When you hear the sound of a snare drum or any other sound source, you're really hearing the vibrations in the air caused by that sound source. The drum itself doesn't directly vibrate your eardrums, nor do the air particles that surround the drum directly. As you can see in this animation, the individual particles of air simply move back and forth. The sound wave that reaches your ear is the result of energy being transferred from one particle to another. In the pebble in the water example, we saw that the waves ripple outward in two dimensions, creating rings. If unobstructed, sound will ripple outward in three dimensions, creating a sphere of acoustical energy. As the sound ripples outward away from the source, it's moving more and more particles with the same amount of energy. Eventually, that energy will be depleted. This attenuation or reduction over distance is explained by the inverse square law. The speed that sound travels outward away from the sound source is determined by the medium or the material carrying the sound waves. Temperature also affects the speed of sound. For simplicity's sake, the standard speed of sound is said to be 1,130 feet per second, or 344 meters per second. Sound waves traveling at 1130 feet per second move one foot every 1.1 millisecond. This is based on the speed of a sound wave on a standard temperature day at 59 degrees Fahrenheit or 15 degrees Celsius. Regardless of the properties a sound has, every sound in a given material will travel at the same speed. Now that you understand intuitively how sound works, in the next video, we'll learn the properties we use to describe a sound wave. I hope you got value out of this video. If you did, consider subscribing, hit the like button, and check out the website at audiouniversityonline.com.